Well, you've heard of genocide. Well, here's the latest, ecocide. Have a little listen to this one. I mean, ecocide as a word is becoming more, it's becoming better known around the world. And the concept is generally mass damage and destruction of nature. Um, but legally speaking, um, what our organisation and other collaborators aim to do is to have this recognised legally as a serious crime. Because one of the issues that sort of pervades all of this discussion is that we have a kind of cultural, very ingrained habit of not taking damage to nature as seriously as we take damage to people and property. Um, and that, I mean, you know, if you're campaigning for human rights, at least you know mass murder, torture, all of these things are serious crimes. But there's no equivalent in the environmental space. Um, and so, and, and you know, unlike a, an international crime like genocide that in, involves a specific intent, with ecocide, what we see is actually what people are trying to do, what businesses are trying to do, is make money, is, you know, is farm, is fish, is do all of these things that are... Um, you know, producing energy and so on um, as well. But what's, it, what's missing is the awareness and the conscience around the side effects, around the collateral damage that happens with that. So the, uh, the war on the farmer or the war on us getting fresh food is, uh, is been ramped up. So the Netherlands seized 3,000 farms. The Irish told farmers to slaughter, was it 200,000 cows? Not for me, but just slaughter them and Germany is increasing taxes. Now, it's kind of strange because when you look at it, Europe back in the day started to subsidize farmers, uh, especially for sheep, etc. especially over here. And then there was this rewilding where we will pay you to use some of your field. But what they were doing was building up farmers' dependency on help from the, the, the government or whatever. And now, obviously, you pull that away and then you tax them heavily and you hope that the farms collapse and you take the farms back in-house, i.e. owned by the state. Now, obviously, the Netherlands have started seizing farms, which is why the Dutch farmers are uh, going mental about it, and which is why you'll find tractors everywhere. But it's not the only country that's doing it, and it'll happen everywhere else. But ecocide, they'll use the stupid left, right, because many of them are vegans. Now, being vegan's one thing, right? If you ain't happy about the way meat's slaughtered, fine. But don't stop other fuckers eating it. Um, we have been meat eaters for so long now, and it's been a natural way of life, and fresh meat was part of a balanced diet. Vegans would argue that, that's up to them. But when they start making it harder and harder for your farmers to produce food for you, milk, uh, meat, and they make it harder for, because they decimated our fishing fleet. It started in 1974 when we jo joined the European Union as whatever it was back then, it eludes me for now. Um, slowly but surely they started to reduce our fishing quotas. Iceland then made sure that we couldn't go over there. So we had the cod wars. And slowly but surely, they made it harder and harder and they put more rules out there. So, say for instance, places like Grimsby and other fishing ports like that, which were thriving back in the day, uh, were reduced. So they had to go out into really, really bad weather to fish for um, like their, their catch and hope they got it. This caused a lot of unnecessary deaths. And as time went forward, they offered a scrappage scheme because they knew that the, the fishermen basically could not afford to fish under the more and more rules that they were bringing about. And obviously they said that the stocks have been overfished and that may well have been a case, okay? But due to one thing and another, our fishing fleet were decimated. So then we've ended up having to buy our fish. Let's take for instance, the cod from Russia. Some of you may not be happy about that, but if you don't go to Ro Russia, which what they do is they catch it fresh, gut it, take the head off, take the tail off and freeze it there. So you're going to get it as fresh as you possibly can. If you don't go to them, you're going to have it off the Chinese. Now what they do is they catch it. Okay. Then they freeze it. Guts, head, the whole fucking lot. Take it back home, thaw it out, gut it, take the head off it and then glaze it to add to the weight. And you've got to eat that shit, which is why sometimes you'll go to a uh, chip shop, for instance, and your fish will seem all crispy. It's because it's been glazed. Now that away, right? The direct impact on you is this, limited food supplies, heightened costs, and starvation, eventually. Now, they said that if you can hold the means of production and you can, you can um, run the banking, you own the country. And what they're doing at the moment is a war on us in so many ways, right? And you look at this proposed war with Russia, perhaps that's another way to finish off our economy. So you bankrupt the economy, you make sure that all the people are on the streets fighting for, over food, over the scraps. And some of you may be um, old enough to remember seeing the video footage of people queuing 
for miles um, after, say, for instance, uh, the war in Germany or maybe during the Cold War when people would queue up for whatever was left in the butchers and whatever was left in the bakers and you were looking at it and there's a couple of sorry sausages there or a few rashes of bacon or one old cob. People went without. And when you do that, you end up with a black market. Problem is, it's kind of hard to go for a black market for meat and fish. And it, all of this is engineered. This isn't by mistake, and this is not under saving the planet. Fuck that. It's nothing to do with saving the planet. It's about fucking killing you lot off. One way or another. Be it through war, be it through hunger, starvation, or whatever. You've heard about the Four Horsemen. Look into the Four Horsemen. We're heading towards the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. We didn't need to. None of this needed to happen. This is the point I'm always trying to get across. That all of this was greedy bastards that said they wanted more taxation for you, more you buying more, and you suffering more, and you working more for less. And that wasn't enough. Because they worked out that sooner or later you fuckers would catch on. What is it? Is it Bug Story or whatever it is where he said, listen here, if they ever work out that there's more of them than us, we're finished. That's exactly the same for the government. So what they'll do is they'll punish us and punish us and punish. So we're all just thinking about the, the thing in front of us rather than the bigger picture. And we'll be fucked. And by the time that we're actually on our knees, they'll have control of everything. And that's pretty much where they're going now. Which is also leads into the reason why I'm going to be doing a live stream with Mark Collette on the weekend. We may have a few different views on stuff, but the point that he's trying to bring to everybody's attention is this guy, Sam, who is part of Patriotic Alternative, is looking at a prison sentence for things that you've all done. That's the, that's the sum of it. Every one of you have probably at some point in your life been guilty of the same crimes that they're trying to fit him up, which aren't crimes, by the way, but now they've made them crimes. And um, they're going to try and fit many more of you up in the future people who are content creators they will come for them people who have put posters out there pointing out the obvious because it's criminal damage apparently now if you put out there and this was part of the case if you put out there say for instance a, 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 a poster or something on a lamppost that they don't like they'll do for criminal damage but yet they won't do people who've put lost cat lost dog left-wing propaganda any of that shit i mean these are the same people that celebrate banksy going around graffiti in the fuck out of places it's your art i don't like or your propaganda i don't like ours is good we won't do it but you so it's important you, you come over um saturday night um to it'll be rev on around i dare say um because i think the, the main channel's still fucked and and listen to what he's got to say because whether you like his politics or not regardless of that what he has to say is important to you and me and every one of us, because this is the direction they're going. Remember Count Dankula, when they, they basically fitted him up, and it's pretty much the same from what I'm hearing. They said that, uh, that Count Dankula's intent, or what he was thinking, was to upset. And it's exactly the same direction that they've gone with Sam, all right? So they can say that we think that because of your constant memes... We actually think that you're generally trying to incite hatred or upset people. Here, I have a prison sentence. Can you see it? I mean, it's mental. And it, even if you put something down as humour, they don't get humour. I mean, what is it I saw the other day? Some Muslim woman over in Ireland saying that we need to stamp out humour. Why? Because there is no humour within Islam and they don't get it. And the one thing about humour is in the worst situations, it can lift people up and give people hope. So they, that's what they want to get rid of. I've been bitten, by the way, by a mozzie, I think, last night. Get on my, not my tip. But anyway, I just thought I'd share this with you. Um, it's, it's just mental. Peter Sweden, he'll give you some information on uh, Twitter. He's very good at this. Um, but yeah, it's madness. So have a look and see what you think. And I'll see you in a bit.